Okay. You go quiet and you go good. <laughs> Greetings, my scattered brothers and sisters. <laughs> Why can't I do this when you're sitting there? I'm, gonna... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna read papers. So I'll be out no, there now. Just you. sit over there and uh, just have a seat right there. I'll... Right here. I'll try it one more time. <laughs> okay. That's too much fun. Sit. Okay, I'm over here in the corner. All right. Can't even see me. <laughs> I don't know you're there. All right. Here we go. Greetings, my scattered brothers and sisters in the Lord. Trust you know the Lord is with you wherever you find yourself scattered today, and that you know that his presence with you is more than enough for whatever you might face today. We are in the second half of John chapter 21, and Jesus has just fed breakfast to the disciples, and he's pulled Peter aside, and he has begun to talk to Peter. And Jesus questions Peter three times, do you love me? Uh, the first one, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? The second one, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And then on the third one, Jesus uses a different word for love. It still means love, but it's just a different word. Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter is grieved that Jesus asked him the third time, uh, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Now, He's grieved, Peter is, because Jesus is basically confronting him with the fact that he denied Jesus three times. And that took place at a charcoal fire, and they just had breakfast at a charcoal fire. And so Jesus is really taking Peter back to that evening of denial and confronting Peter with it. And Peter is having to humble himself. And kind of acknowledge that, yeah, he does love Jesus. He does really care about Jesus. But he also knows that he failed Jesus. And that he had boasted that he would lay down his life for Jesus. And far from it, uh, he denied being a follower of Jesus. I want to talk for a moment about what's going on with the different words that are used here. So the word that Jesus uses for love in the first two questions, do you love me more than these? Do you love me? The word he uses for love is agape. And we normally think of that as servant love, sacrificial love. When Peter answers the questions, he says, Lord, you know that I love you. But he uses a different word for love. Uh, the verb is phileo. And it is a love that's genuinely caring. Um, sometimes it's termed friendship love. But that's probably too light. It's, it's a very caring, sincere, genuine love. And so Jesus says, Peter, do you agape me? And Peter answers, Lord, you know that I friend you, genuinely care about you. Uh, this happens twice. You know, Peter, do you, do you agape me more than these? Do you love me more than these? Uh, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. But Peter drops off the than these. Uh, no longer going to boast that he loves Jesus more than others love Jesus. And then the second time, Peter, uh, or Simon, son of John, do you agape me? Yes, Lord, you know that I friend you. And then the third time, Jesus switches to Peter's word. Simon, son of John, do you friend me? Do you genuinely care about me? Uh, doesn't use the word agape. And Peter is grieved. And grieve that, yeah, he's, he's facing, uh, he's having to own up to his denial. And I think what's going on in the Gospel of John anyways, these are two different words for love, and John uses them interchangeably. Uh, sometimes the beloved disciples referred to as the agape disciples. Sometimes the beloved disciples referred to as the phileo disciple. So for the Gospel of John, the words are used fairly interchangeably, but I think it is significant that Jesus switches words and uses Peter's language. See, Jesus is descending all the way into Peter's failure to meet him there. 
And Peter's ashamed he won't use Jesus' language. He had already used Jesus' language saying, I'd lay down, lay down my life for you. Well, that's good shepherd language. And now Peter is too ashamed to even use Jesus' language of agape. He's going to use a different word. And Jesus descends into Peter's shame and failure and meets him there and says, okay, Peter, I'll use your word. Uh, do you friend me? Do, do you genuinely care about me? And Peter's answer is, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you, that I friend you, that I genuinely care. And when Peter says, you know all things, I think what he's acknowledging is not simply that Jesus knew where the fish were, what side to cast the net on, or that Jesus knows all about all things, but that Jesus knows all about Peter, that Jesus actually knew Peter better and Peter knew himself. And so, Lord, you know all things about me. You know that I deeply care for you. And when Peter cast himself upon Jesus like that, um, Jesus isn't there to condemn him. He's there to restore him. But to be fully restored, it's like they got to revisit fully that moment of shame, that moment of denial. And each and every time, then Jesus recommissions Peter, feed my sheep, take care of my lambs, take care of my sheep. And Jesus is going to go on to share with Peter uh, the type of death that Peter will die that will actually bring God glory. So wherever you're scattered today, uh, know that Jesus, Jesus comes to us and meets us in the depths of our shame and failure but always with the purpose of restoration. God bless and have a restored day.